Hi, Dave Diegelman with Equity Real Estate. Welcome to 2023. 2022, what a roller coaster ride that was uh, in real estate especially. But what I want to do is look at the numbers as we do each month. And we're going to try to keep this brief, but it's kind of exciting to see what happens at the year end. And I will tell you one of our normal trends uh, during November, December, and the first part of January is the market traditionally does slow down a bit. Now, it didn't last year, it didn't really the year before so much, but that is a normal trend for us to have happen, and we certainly have seen it this year. Interestingly, we're going to look at the numbers and find a couple of surprises in there, but um, a lot of it won't be surprises. So let's start off with what we've got going. So <clears throat> number of listings on the market, you can see that this red line right here, take these two off, has exponentially grown and it's starting to come down right now. When I open up the um, search on our Flex MLS on our Washington County board, I look at this number right here and post that in our um, in our reports, same number down here. And 1408, we were at 1650 uh, a month, month and a half ago. And then it dwindled down and stayed at 1550 for most of last month. And now it's, you know, come down. What does that mean? Well, my take on it is a lot of people don't want to have their properties on the market during the holidays. And <clears throat> so some of them take it off. Some of them procrastinate putting their home on the market because they're going to be having family in town, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, our listings uh, are on the decline right now. Typically during January, February, March, April, and May, they do decline. So we'll see what happens um, with that. Now, last year we had an increase of listings that came on the market, and that's because of the frenzy that we had in sales. So let's look at the new listings coming on the market last year. You can see that they increased drastically um, February, March, April, and May, and then they kind of plateaued and then kind of came down. So Again, in my humble opinion, what's happening here is that um, there was a frenzy last year, something like I've never seen in 20 years of real estate. And I've been in multiple offer uh, markets before. Uh, last year was absolutely crazy. So I think what happened was all the hype for the market comes March, April, May, and June. And that's when people start putting their homes on the market and then they stay on the market because our market slowed down. Interest rates contributed a lot to it. Um, really just a social consciousness of fear more than anything else. Because when you think about it, everyone needs a place to live and everyone's going to be paying a mortgage. You're going to, either going to pay your own mortgage or you're going to pay a mortgage for someone else if you're a renter. Um, and <clears throat> of course, the exception of that in Southern Utah is 30 to 40% of our sales do come from cash. And that's coming from typically other real estate investments, not always, but a lot of times it's, uh, you know, coming from equity from another house or from the sale of another property or, or such. So being that we're in a retirement marketplace, we're a little bit different than the rest of the United States, but the interest rates have definitely affected us. So new listings have grown, and then let's look at the sold listings. So last year at the end of January, and January starts our strong time of the year, uh, we were at um, 391 sold listings for that month. And at the end of December this year, we were in 2022 rather, we were at 256. So that seems like a huge margin. But if I were to go back to December of 2020. One, um, we would probably find kind of similar numbers because December typically does drop off quite a bit. So <clears throat> I'm kind of encouraged because to me, this is almost flatlined. I see that we'll go up a little bit in January. And then, of course, we'll have our normal February, March, April, May. And I think of what, what happens a little bit here in southern Utah is that we have people from up north that have live in, been living in the inversion and January rolls around and they're just sick of it. They're, you know, we can retire, let's get out of here, or let's get a second home so we can escape. And I think that's why we get a surge. And then February, we have our parade of homes. March, April, May, it's just gorgeous down here. So we'll see what happens this year. I don't expect that we're going to be at the same volume or the same prices as last year. And we'll touch on that 
in a minute. So listing prices. Um, so if we take a look at the active median list price last year, um, it was around 700,000 at this time of year. It's about 600,000. That doesn't mean that the $700,000 house became $600,000. It just means that more people were putting their house on the market in this price range um, last year and more people this year are putting it into a lower bracket under 600,000. Um, sold median sale price down here. Again, this doesn't mean that listing prices of 700,000 are gonna, or 600,000 are gonna sell for 500,000. We could be heading there. I don't think we are. We'll go into that in a minute. But anyway, this is just the, the sold listing prices. And again, we're, we're fairly stable here at the $500,000 mark. Of course, it peaked last year, and this is probably representative of a $500,000 house going up to 550, because that was happening last year. Uh, during the peak of things. I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon again. Absorption rate. This is probably my favorite graph of all these graphs. Absorption rate is how many months of inventory we have versus, or how many, how much inventory we have versus how many sales we typically have per month. So last month we were at a low of one month. We actually went below that a couple of months prior to that during the frenzy. And you can see that it's grown and grown and grown. So four months, um, three to four months is a normal marketplace for Southern Utah since I've been here for 15 years. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that this is anything unusual to any of us. The good news is sellers that want to sell their house now have the opportunity to buy with a lot of choices the next house. Uh, first time buyers that want to buy a house and they need help buying down the points so that they can get a lower mortgage interest rate. Sellers are cooperating with that now. So we have a lot more, um, what would I say, you know, a normal marketplace, but a lot more ingenuity coming into that, creativeness coming into it. And that's good, that's helpful. Um, sold to list ratio, <clears throat> this is also a really important factor. And you can see last year it topped out at about 101. And what that means is if a house was put on the market for, let's say, $500,000, that it actually, the average house sold for $505,000. Whereas this year, we are down to 94%. So it's $20,000 less on that same example. So, uh, you know, it's, um, this is a very unusual bubble right here. This is normal. So having 5 to 6% uh, below asking or where the comps are, sometimes is normal, especially if you're in a declining marketplace. If you are looking to list your house, what you don't want to have happen, and I forgot to point this out, point it out down here, is you don't want to be chasing the market down. So if we're heading into a declining market, which a lot of people say that we will be because of interest rates, I tend to think that we're going to stabilize to the prices before last year's stupid super boom. So in some instances, that was as much as 15 to 20, 25%. But I think we're going to be more around the 10 to 12% area where our prices drop down to. But that's just my opinion based on the economists that I look at and the economic indicators. But you don't, if that the market is going down, you want to chase it down. And I remember back here, we were looking at January, February, and March. Well, a real estate agent like myself that's in the market every day sees these numbers. We see the ad calls come in. We see the different things happening instantaneously. By the time it hits the news, it's two to four weeks down the road. And by the time people, there's a social consciousness or a collective consciousness about what to do, like the frenzy of last year's buying, um, it's usually, <laughs> not that it's too late, but I mean, <laughs> you can see right here, it kind of goes out of control. So you don't want to be chasing the market down. So my suggestion, if you are looking to list your house mid-January to mid-February are kind of the deadlines of when you would want to have your house on the market because our rush starts happening then. And right now we're looking at average market times of anywhere from 60 to 80 days. We'll look at that. Uh, in a bit here. 
the summary of statistics. So I'm going to skip over that because that's in the report. You can look at it. The sold listings, let's look at the volume in different price categories. And for the purposes of today, taking the 400 to 500 or the 400 to 449,000 and 450 to 499, if we combine those two categories, we're going to be up at around 55 units. Um, and 55 units would be the second highest volume that we have other than the 72 in the 500 to 750. Why do I say that? I say that because we're not on, <clears throat> it's hard to find inventory under $500,000 a lot of times. And people think that that marketplace is just like impossible, but it's not. We have a lot of properties that are under $500,000, but they are becoming less and less as our median price has gone above $500,000. The largest range in numbers that we have is still 500 to 750,000. And I remember it kind of cracks me up, but several years ago talking about this before we came to that uh, brink in our marketplaces, 2015 and 16. And um, <laughs> during 2013 and 14, it was like a death zone if your house was over 450,000. Between 450 and 600 was just this zone of all of a sudden market times were like three times longer than the market above it and the market below it. So kind of interesting how those trends change, but nevertheless, that's where we are. It's fairly stable. You can see that there's only 3.4% less um, sold listings in that price category this year over last year. Pending listings, these are the ones that are under contract. We know how much they were listed for. We don't know how much they were under contract for. 750 to a million uh, is still the highest bracket. But I want to share with you also the one to two million and the two million and above marketplace. Now, two million and above, there's not enough numbers to make any rhyme or reason. There's three sales and seven sales the year before. So that's really not anything you can trend off of. Um, 20 and 36 are the two different numbers we have from 2022 over 2021. And again, for one month, those are numbers. They're, they're somewhat significant. But what I wanted to say was traditionally when the market does level out or it starts falling flat, this is where I find the best bargains. Why? Well, I'll tell you, it's very hard to replicate those homes in that price range if you were to buy the lot and build it today. So a lot of times you can really capitalize on what someone has already invested into a home. Whereas when you reach under $500,000, even under $700,000, um, it, it becomes kind of a wash in that way. So active listings, new listings, again, we're going to see the same trends, active listings, uh, largest category is going to be 500 to 750,000. There is a lot of inventory, 750 to a million and the million to 2 million. So compared to the sales, the 1 to 2 million plus marketplace has more inventory than the sales by the highest margin. And so that's why I say that's, that's where the bargains are um, if you're really looking from an investment standpoint, if you've got the money and the lifestyle you want to be in that area, these are actually good times to start investing in those types of properties, in my humble opinion. But anyway, um, if you would like more numbers, let's look real quick at 84770. This is First American Titles report, came out a few days ago. And they are speculating or saying that we're at a slight seller's advantage. I would agree with them. But I think we're going to be moving into the buyer's advantage very soon. And um, this was interesting. The median rent price is $1,895. So yes, interest rates are high, but <clears throat> rents are high too. And we're going to see that probably, you know, continue, although slowly, but that's probably going to continue. Um, more and more people move into this area because they can work from home. So it's not our job marketplace that's drawing people in, but thankfully our job marketplace is expanding also. But we'll see what happens. And then down here on the inventory, you can see this slide last year from January to May. This is as sales increase, inventory decreases. So this is again, whereas if you're a home 
seller and you want to put your house on the market, you don't want to be, you know, coming out real late in this whole thing. So anyway, let's look over at January, February. So you see this slide here. This is what I'm talking about. Um, inventory is going to decrease as sales increase. And you don't want to be on this side if you're a home seller where you're putting your market on in May because you've heard the market's really good. And all of a sudden your competition goes up and up and up and up. So uh, that's pretty much what we're going to look at today. If you have any questions, if I can be of any help to you, get a hold of me. You can message me. You can call me direct 435-703-4041. God bless you. Have a great 2023.